I had been to the Sixth Floor Museum many times before with guests from out of town, but I had no idea that it also had programs that were definitely geared toward teachers and students. I come in and knowing that every day that passes is history, and our kids are forgetting what the history is about. The session here is JFK and civil rights. And that issue is, I think, real important to teachers because we teach civil rights, and sometimes we forget how President Kennedy uh, was influenced by that, what effect he had on that, and also just not just him, but also civil rights in the 60s. The impact of the civil rights movement and the legacy of John Kennedy for the Latino community, the African American community, very, very important for me and my ability to teach my students at the high school level. We took a audio guided tour of the Sixth Floor Museum going through the exhibits. Prelude to Kennedy being elected all the way through uh, the assassination and beyond. We saw some great uh, primary source resources that some of us used in our lesson plan planning uh, that afternoon and throughout the week. When I first moved to Dallas, it was in 1990, and I thought that the museum would be some kind of morbid place with a fascination with the assassination, and it turns out that the museum is actually a beautiful place to learn about the 60s and presidential politics. I just think it's a great resource for Texas, and I'm really happy to have participated in this uh, conference. The first speaker we had was Dennis Simon from SMU. I've heard him several times before and he does a great job. Just gave us a good overview about civil rights in Dallas. One of the first presentations we had was from Lindsay. Uh, she uh, brought in her collections and she showed us the um, actual original documents for a history teacher. We like to see those preliminary documents. We want to see the original photographs and then um, allow students to analyze based on what they see. We had the Latina American Struggle for Civil Rights, Dr. Max Krokmal, uh, led us through that presentation and again had some wonderful Wonderful pictures and websites and various activities that we could use uh, certainly in our lesson planning. There was good information that was shared that we can share, I can share as I go back to my campus and my district. Next we had a presentation from Jenny Sweeney from the National Archives. What an incredible collection the National Archives has. As any teacher knows, trying to navigate through that website is very difficult because there are so many hundreds of thousands of documents, primary sources that teachers absolutely need to have their hands on. And Jenny did a great job of showing us how to maneuver that and um, look at those documents and the resources that we could get from those documents, entire lesson plans from that day. We really enjoyed that. not being a resident of the area. Going on the all-day bus tour was certainly fascinating. I actually wasn't looking forward to it because I thought, oh my gosh, we're gonna, it's 103, we're gonna get off and on the bus, but it, it was absolutely great. The first thing we did once we got on the bus here at the museum was ride over to Love Field. And while we're on the ride, we were listening to museum curators. On your screen right now, you're looking at a photograph from the museum's Dallas Times Herald collection. And then from Love Field, uh, we headed back on the, the route uh, that the president's uh, motorcade took in, in November 1963. According to the reporters and police, the total number of people who turned out for the motorcade room was anywhere from 150 to 200,000. After we left Love Field, we were given special permission to go into the garage to the exact spot where uh, Jack Ruby assassinated Lee Harvey Oswald. I felt incredibly privileged to even be down there because that is not something that people get to do every single day. Um, it's a very limited area um, and it looks exactly the way that it did on that exact day. It was um, very surreal and uh, we felt incredibly lucky. So from there, we headed by the site of the uh, John F. Kennedy Memorial. And then as we got closer to the museum and the Texas School Book Depository, you see the clips of the president being shot, Mrs. Kennedy on the trunk, the people hitting the, the ground because they didn't know what was happening. Really broke me up. Uh, I, I didn't believe I'd be that emotional about it because I've been, I've stood in the window before and I've been through the exhibit a number of times. 
but actually being on that road at that moment, I was practically in tears when we went by the grass as we were speeding off towards Parkland. When we went to the Texas Theater, that's always a treat because it pretty much looks pretty similar to the way it did back then. I guess it's the drama around the theater, what happened there, what movie was showing. With this group of people, talking about that specific day, much different feel being in the theater. And then we were privileged to see a clip of the movie called War is Hell. We were told that there is no known copy of that movie anymore, but someone had a little eight minute clip. Well, just the idea that, that Oswald went in there and sat down, I mean, grant you, the seat's not there anymore, but just the fact that we were sitting in there. We were watching the same film that Oswald saw that day. After we spent the morning doing the motorcade, we went to the Latino Cultural Center. They had an incredible oral history um, exhibit that you got to go and they had headphones for you and you could listen to the stories of the Mexican-American civil rights struggle that is seldom ever told, but we got to hear the story from the people that lived it themselves. It was an incredible exhibit. Once we finished our visit to uh, the Latina Cultural Center, we went over to the Juanita Craft House over in South Dallas. My favorite thing would probably have been the Juanita Craft House because uh, it, when I walked in there, it was almost like the walls were speaking. All these years, I mean, I didn't even know who Juanita Craft was. I mean, that's terrible. Here I am, a uh, Dallas resident, Dallas schools, and I didn't know who this woman was until now. Her mother had a, a tuberculosis, and so in, in 1918, and at that time, you know, there was um, segregation. They would not accept her in the hospital. They wouldn't treat her in the hospital. And so uh, she sat outside the hospital with her mother and tended to her the best way that she could, and her mother died outside of the hospital. Not being treated. So, as you can imagine, that helped to kind of motivate and keep her motivated and, and uh, inspired to work towards civil rights. In this room, the, the bedroom here, you're going to notice that there'll, there'll be a, uh, you'll see a lot of her awards. The idea that in this little house in South Dallas, so many big things happened, so many important people visited. Just being in the presence and just seeing it will tell you the history without you really having to say a word. You know, the average person can do great, great things. And she certainly wasn't an average person, but she wasn't a wealthy person. And she certainly wasn't from the class at the time who had most of the power. It was a wonderful feeling to be there. After the bus tour, we had a presentation from Dr. Todd Moy. Most of us in the room would love to do oral histories with our students, but we had no idea how to actually go about that. And Dr. Moy was incredible about showing us that. He did a lot of research for us and showed us the Tuskegee Airmen um, and the, the behind the scenes stories. Once that was finished, we had a, a great living oral history presentation. Stephen Fagan here at the museum uh, moderated and commentated on uh, Clarence Broadnax. Uh, he's a 1964 civil rights activist um, involved in the Piccadilly cafeteria protest. Um, there's a very famous picture of him where he is carrying a sign that said, did JFK die in vain? He said, Mr. Broadnax, I thought we told you not to come back down here. I said, I didn't hear that part. <laughs> and even if you did, I'll be here. I told you I would be here until this gentleman learned to serve all mankind. It's just that simple. He spoke so well about what he was up to, what his life was like, and so that was a wonderful snapshot for me of what life was like for an African American in Dallas in the, in the 60s. You hear stories from my mom, my, my grandmother, when she was living um, about those times, but to actually meet a civil rights activist, someone whose pictures I had been looking at that first day and to, to sit in and talk to him was just an indescribable feeling. All of the lectures were brilliant. The oral history with Clarence was always heartfelt. Getting ways of using our, creating our own oral history is very, very important. To see a man that continues to fight 
for civil rights and have our kids uh, remember that. I think that impacted me. This has been a great week. I have, I am so glad that I got picked to come. I have learned so much and this is just, I just consider it a, grand, a great honor to have been selected and to be here. I would just recommend, you know, I think they're going to do some more of these conferences and if you get an opportunity to, to be involved, it's worth the time. You're going to gain a whole lot more than what effort you put in making the lesson plans and it's something that you can use for the rest of your teaching life. For me, without Humanities Texas, I wouldn't have been able to participate. You know, I wasn't going to be financially able to, and I, and I knew that um, going in, and so I said, well, there's, you know, either yes or no. And so when I got the, the yes, I was like, oh my God, I got a scholarship from Humanities Texas. This is awesome. I'll be able to attend the Institute because I really, really wanted to be there. And, Without that support, I, I wouldn't have been able to be there. And so I just think that it is so important that we have organizations like Humanities Texas that really give back to not only educators, but to all educational stakeholders. It is so important that they continue to provide that service to educators because you have people like me who are truly, truly excited and really want to, to partake in, in the Institute.